Boys and girls, come hear my greeting. I hope you don't plan on sleeping. Tonight, for while you are dreaming, evil awakes, unearthed and creeping. There's things that thump, things that bite, things that go bump in the night. What are these things you sit and ponder? Brace yourselves. We call them monsters. What? He's going to tell us about monsters, but they're not going to be that scary. Silence, you dirty apparition! Don't you see the danger you are in? For what I speak is 100% real. Don't believe me? Just ask my pet eel. This guy is nuts. What? I'm not an apparition. I'm a ghoul. The first monster we'll see today is something that... Uh... Likes to eat hay. First they champ, then they stamp, then... Okay, I can't speak in rhymes for the whole thing. I have a question for you guys. Are you familiar with the term furry? What? Well, after doing research on these monsters, I don't think furry is a new concept. Humans, for whatever reason, have always been obsessed with personifying animals. And who can blame them? <laughs> Look how cute these guys are. Now, a lot of these monsters follow a similar pattern. So if you ever wanted to Frankenstein up a monster, all you have to do is take two already existing animals, one of them being preferably a human, and then you just gotta put them together. You all know about mermaids. One part sexy, the other half is just some lady. Well, do you know about this even scarier combination? It's called a hippo campus. Half hippo, half college. They say after four stressful years, he accumulates $100,000 of debt and no one in his field is hiring. <laughs> oh, I'm just messing with you guys. Okay, but for real, a hippocampus is a half fish, half horse. Oh, like the Neopet. What? Yeah, a uh, Fiopian. I had one when I was like two. I used my Christmas paintbrush on it. You guys aren't scared of a literal seahorse? Well, how does it kill people? Like, like, can it turn them into stone? Uh, no, but the Scandinavians have a version called the Kelpie that tricks humans into riding them, and then it drowns the humans. Probably should have started with that one. That's... okay, I guess. All right, Edward, if a murderous horse doesn't put you on edge, then how about this? A monopod. Yeah, that's right, it looks just like a regular person, but it only has one leg. Whoa, are you calling amputees monsters? No, this amputee has one giant leg. And by the way, these guys date back all the way to 400 BC, way before the first amputee ever existed. Also, despite them only having one leg, they're supposedly very fast, so imagine this guy aggressively chasing you at midnight. Yeah, I'm sure you'd piss your pants too. What about this? A blemmy. Again, looks like a regular person, but oh wait, where's its head? I don't see it anywhere. Oh, it's on its chest, like some kind of... Pokemon! Come on, does this not terrify you? How would you give this guy a hug without suffocating him? My dad doesn't have a head. Also, he rides a horse, so this is all a pretty normal Tuesday for me. Alright, it's fine that you're not scared, because I've been saving the best monsters for last. Everyone, meet the Serpopherd. It has the body of a lion, the head of a lion, but the neck of a snake. Ugh, it's so gross. Why would anything need that long of a neck? So it can talk to giraffes? Imagine if it could retract its neck, and then you just think it's a normal old lion and say, hey, that's pretty scary, but at least it's 20 feet away from me, and then its head would just extend out of its body and then bite your head off. Speaking of snake-based creatures, what is the second most mischievous animal? Answer, the snake. Snakes represent Slytherin from Harry Potter, and those guys are always up to something, and snakes were responsible for the fall of man. But do you know what the number one most mischievous animal is? Answer, the fox. He's been in a ton of fables. He's a master hustler. So the fox and the snake are two of the most mischievous animals. But what if they had a baby together? Well, take a look at this monster from Chile called the... The... I can't say it. The Jiravulu, there we go. It's a half fox, half snake, and it has a claw for a tail, and it also creates whirlpools to drown people. Now this would be a really cool monster if it wasn't so terrifying. You know what? I got even more snake-based monsters to show you. Take a look at the Amphisbina. 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 That's it, right? It's a half snake, half snake, but the same half. 
It's a snake with two heads on both ends for double biting action. I think it'd be cool if there was a creature that was the snake's tail on both sides. That'd be so useless. Oh wait, that's just an oversized worm. How would either one of them poop? Great question. I honestly don't know how a real snake poops. And the last snake-based monster I'm going to show you is called the Chalalita longicollis. That's its Latin name. Its real name is the Snake Neck Turtle. It's a lot like the Serpopard with its long neck, but instead a turtle. But I doubt you'll have to worry about these things. There's no way these abominations can be real. No, those are real. Huh? They're indigenous to Australia? I saw one at the zoo with my dad. <laughs> There's no way these things can be real. No, they're definitely real. But do you know what isn't real? All of us. None of us are real, James. Why do you think we all have the same voice? You're talking to yourself again. It's been three weeks since the accident. You need to snap out of it. What are you guys talking about? You're totally real. So, did I scare you? Huh? You guys scared? Hey, you! Knock it off in there. <gasps> ah!